Thank you very much for Toshiba for inviting me, for giving me the possibility to speak in this uh, particular symposium, putting together heart, placenta, and oncology. Now we are completely changing the topic. And uh, okay, thank you. Now the title, New Approaches in Gynecological Oncology. I wanted to start by saying that uh, there is an undiscussed role of ultrasound in the preoperative assessment of gynecological tumors. For instance, uh, the preoperative pre assessment of ovarian masses. Uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, papers in uh, the literature, in particular regarding the work of the IOTA, International Ovarian Tumor Analysis Group. But what about the follow-up of our patients operated on because of a gynecological cancer? There are several challenges. For instance, we do not really know so far which uh, an early diagnosis of a recurrence uh, really impacts the mortality rate of our patients. Then uh, we don't know, there is no general agreement about uh, the optimal follow-up. How often? which uh, with the methods uh, and uh, for how long. That's why we decided to study this item. So we started by describing the ultrasound characteristics of recurrences, and usually they appear as vascularized solid tumors within the pelvis. Then we decided to conduct a prospective study on uh, 385 patients operated on because of gynecological tumors. And uh, as you can see here, in all cases uh, where ultrasound made a suspicion of a recurrent tumor, it was confirmed despite uh, the absence of symptoms, despite uh, tumor markers were negative. And uh, in some cases, uh, these are two examples, we found a very small nodule. Uh, CT magnet resonance were negative, negative C125, and they turned out to be recurrent lesion. Furthermore, ultrasound allow us to get immediately histology by performing an ultrasound-guided biopsy. On the other side, when we have a negative ultrasound examination, in asymptomatic patients with a negative SA125, uh, the annual CT or magnetic resonance was able to identify lung recurrence in one single patient. So you can imagine the number of CT scan magnetic resonance we do for follow-up, and we don't know the real utility. So this is a wide scenario with uh, still open questions to be answered. So the advances, advances in technology seems to give us new possibilities, and I'm going to discuss about two items, fusion imaging and intraoperative ultrasound. Fusion imaging. Fusion imaging means, in a few words, a synchronized display on our screen of real-time ultrasound together with the navigation in multiplanar reconstructed images. They can be magnetic resonance, PET, or PET-CT. Very simply, I, just a few words. You can see the machine. You can, oh, the technical aspect. You have a receiver on your probe, and it can be placed over the transabdominal probe or in, on the transvaginal probe. Then you have a control unit and the transmitter. But as you can see in your scanning room, it almost doesn't appear. So the steps. You have to upload the examination, PET or magnetic resonance. Then you uh, are scanning your patient. Of course, there are several um, tricks and tips because you have to pay attention at the position of the patient, you have to pay attention at the bladder, and uh, to make it similar as it was uh, during the PET-CT or CT scan. So, 
In the literature, you can find so far very little. There are some people in obstetrics and gynecology, I'm talking about that. So there are three papers in obstetrics, two papers uh, regarding adenomyosis and endometriosis, and uh, one oral communication last year um, by Valentina Chiappa, one of my fellow, um, working on cervical cancer. And uh, next month, we will present some data regarding lymph nodes, so fusion and the detection of lymph nodes on vulvar cancer. But just to give you some, some idea about uh, how, to, how it works, uh, let's uh, look at this case, case one. 46 years old patient, she underwent uh, a subtotal hysterectomy because of a benign disease, so she's not an oncological patient actually. But during routine scan, she was diagnosed a solid a nodule uh, in the pelvis. And uh, the suspicion was deep endometriosis. This is uh, the clip. So, okay, the rectum. Then uh, you can see the rectum, the bladder, the cervix, the rectum again, and embedded within this uh, perirectal fat, this nodule, and another small nodule. Okay, ovaries were normal. So we, this is a, a zoom on the nodule with the vascularization, power Doppler. I don't know if you have any idea. Quite regular, no cystic areas, no stripy. Very well vascularized, so difficult to say. And uh, this is uh, the assessment uh, with uh, SMI. So we can say it's really very well vascularized. So she underwent PET CT, and the result was positive for one nodule and very little for another one. So we decided to ask for magnetic resonance, and we performed fusion. So. First, we had to, to find uh, the comparison between uh, the two examinations. So here you can see the nodule. We decided the cervix again and the nodule. Then uh, uh, you have to focus, uh, you have to look for the um, region of interest. And uh, here is a zoom, so you can navigate. First, you have to fix the plane. And then you can navigate and to understand uh, for several reasons. Here, for instance, you want to see whether the lesion with the contrast of magnetic resonance and positive opacity corresponds to your nodule. And this is the, the assessment on color. This is contrast, magnetic resonance. And if you look before, I'm going back a little bit. The magnetic resonance was absolutely uncertain, again, about the diagnosis. On ultrasound, of course, we have also the dynamicity of the examination. So we could say at least it's not part of the cervix. It's something else within the fat. Okay, so color. And then we decided, okay, the two images correspond. So we decided for a biopsy. And uh, would you like to guess the diagnosis? Somebody? How many benign? How many malignant? All of you? Okay, no, it seems to be benign. Benign, we have just got the results and uh, we are waiting for the immunohistochemistry. But just to give you an example. But now, let's move on into intraoperative ultrasound. What does it mean? It means that uh, we can assist the surgeon, if we are requested, by using different approaches, uh, transvaginal, laparoscopic or intra-abdominal approach. And uh, please consider several scenarios. First of all, recurrence of borderline ovarian tumors. You know that borderline ovarian tumors are typically of young girl, young ladies. So we need to offer them a conservative surgery. And sometimes it's difficult to find the small lesion during laparoscopy and to define the normal ovarian parenchyma. 
Another issue, we have uh, patients operated on who underwent uh, chemo radiation. So when you want to find a deep uh, retroperitoneal nodule during laparoscopy, where you have not the tactile feeling, it's quite difficult sometimes. So these are some type of um, uh, clinical contexts. So starting from uh, borderline ovarian tumors, we dedicated these two studies. We described the characteristics of this recurrent lesion. And on ultrasound, we can really detect very small with recurrent lesion within the ovary. Then we wanted to know the growth rate of this lesion because sometimes it's important to wait until the growth of this lesion thus allowing this small lesion to reach the surface and to become visible on ultrasound. But at the same time, you have to be sure not to miss some small recurrences within it. And uh, we uh, obtain the growth rate that is one, two millimeter per month. Now, the application during surgery. Let's look at this case, 20 years old woman. She underwent a previous adnexectomy because of a serous borderline. And during follow-up on ultrasound, a small recurrent lesion was detected. No, no, sorry, not a small, a recurrent lesion in the remaining ovary. And she underwent surgery, but during surgery, we were asked to go there. Why? Because they saw the lesion, it's this one, solid tissue, you can see the laparoscopic instrument, and it was clear that it was borderline tumor. But then they asked, what about uh, these other two lesions? And we confirmed what we said in the preoperative examination, that they seem to be two functional cysts. So one corpus luteum and another corpus luteum within the same ovary. Then we guide the surgeon to find, to define the normal ovarian parenchyma. You can see the normal ovarian parenchyma here. So we suggested, that why not to remove only the tumor? Okay, but they decided not to follow our suggestions. So they removed everything and they turned out to be two functional cysts and borderline ovarian tumor. In any case, we could preserve normal ovarian parenchyma. Another example, during surgery, this lady, 40 years old woman, asymptomatic, and um, she had an incidental finding of a nodule on ultrasound. At magnetic resonance, again, an uncertain result, a malignant lesion or a schanoma. So we, she was referred to our unit. You can see the two normal ovaries. And this is uh, the video of the nodule in the pelvis. Perhaps uh, you can notice that the nodule is very fixed to the pelvic wall. This is the bone, okay? We put on color and on color, examination, no vascularization was observed inside. So regular margin, no color, and the hypothesis of the retroperitoneal localization. So she went to the surgical theater, and the surgeon confirmed the negative um, peritoneal cavity, but they couldn't find the lesion without moving from laparoscopy to laparotomy. So they called the ultrasound examiner, and during surgery, we could guide the surgeon, you can see the transvaginal probe and the laparoscopic instrument to say, okay, that's the nodule. So they could find it, and again, it turned out to be a neurinoma. Other two possible applications. This one, a patient with a previous endometrial cancer she underwent chemo radiation, and she had a suspicion of a recurrent lesion, lymph nodes, on uh, um, magnetic resonance and PET-CT. So she underwent surgery, and uh, they removed the lymph nodes, but at a certain point, they weren't so sure 
to have removed all the suspected uh, lymph nodes. So the examiner again helped the surgeon to find and they could detect a residual lymph node. The final example, completely different topic. Again, a very young uh, lady. The CT scan detected uh, a bilateral ovarian tumors. As you can see, the uh, tumor markers were very high, especially this one. The preparative scan, our preparative scan, was a bilateral dermoids, but they were really afraid about the uh, malignancy, negative gastroscopy and colonoscopy. She underwent surgery, and the surgeons, uh, during laparoscopy, they decided to remove one adnex, and at frozen section, it turned out to be dermoid. Dermoid, actually. So they had the problem how to deal with the controlateral ovary because it was uh, transformed, it was enlarged, but we told them that they were dermoid, but they weren't sure at all where to, to find, to, to see the normal parenchyma. And in particular, they were afraid because uh, in the upper part of this large dermoid, there was another cyst. And uh, indeed, she, uh, it was, sorry, it was uh, a corpus luteum, an hemorrhagic cyst. So they finally trusted us, and so they removed only the dermoid. And so a conservative surgery was performed, again, by uh, minimally invasive surgery. So in these days, uh, we have just presented uh, the results of our experience regarding the ultrasound uh, um, help to the surgeon to do surgery only with a minimally invasive uh, surgery. And uh, we selected in this study 51 patients with a single recurrent disease, a candidate for a secondary cytoreduction surgery, and uh, we decided to treat them only by minimal invasive surgery. In 12 cases uh, of these 51 patients, uh, the ultrasound examiner was called to help the surgeon. So in all cases, uh, the, the examiner was able to identify the lesion and uh, no conversion to open laparotomy was um, happened there. So, how can we assist our surgeons during um, their work? We can use uh, either this laparoscopic probe, and uh, it can be used as a sterile um, instrument, or if you have another patient, you can use a cover, and sometimes you can examine the pelvis, you can have to push against the, the wall, and you can see the contemporary um, aspects, or we can use uh, the finger probe or the laparoscopic probe during intra-abdominal uh, surgeries. Why? Because sometimes uh, they want to check uh, a deep nodule in the liver, a deep nodule in the parotid region, and, and that's it. So, fusion and uh, intraoperative surgery. I think that uh, we are really opening a new phase, a new era in the collaboration between ultrasound examiners and gynecological oncology surgeons. Thank you very much.